Justin Walker, 22 ground balls and 13 caused turnovers. In goal, there's been a split between Sophie Oaks and Joanna Kubler, and Kubler will get her fourth start of the season. But the impact player for Holy Cross is Keely Connors, the standout senior who was all Patriot League first teamer last year as a junior when she set a program single season record with 93 draw controls this season. As you can see, 16 goals scored, uh, but also 33 draw controls. She is shooting 7 of 14 from the 8 meter, and this Holy Cross team has been effective this year. Eight free position shots per game, a similar team to Lafayette in terms of pace, and Connors will be the key today for the Crusaders. Meanwhile, for the Leopards, under head coach Allison Fisher, all that capable quartet in attack, uh, the likes of Stein, Kirby, and Novick up front. Hannah Davey plays two ways, but a key player in terms of the top four, combining for 52 goals and 14 assists this season. Defensively, you have a lot of leadership and senior experience, the likes of Annalise Kinney, the co-captain Amelia Heisler, and Elise Ashford. They've done a great job forcing shots from distance and savable shots for the sophomore keeper Quinn Lacey and her 56.68 percentage leads the nation, but she's also ninth in the nation in saves per game. But the impact player here today for the Leopards will be a versatile player in Hannah Davey. And really, it's going to be a key today for the Leopards in a matchup between two similar teams that like to push the pace, create free position shots, but also force turnovers on the ride. And Davey's been a key factor on both sides of the field. She ranks second on the team with 13 goals. Also ranks second in ground balls with 14. Third in cause turnovers and first in draw controls this, this season and those respective totals. The draw, uh, cause turnovers seven and the draw controls 30. So a big factor in terms of the versatility for the Leopards. We'll step off to a break when we come back. The opening draw between Lafayette and Holy Cross. Stay tuned. Two sides almost ready to get going here. Quinn Lacey is going to be a key factor in cage, as mentioned already. A 56.6 save percentage leading the nation. Two Leopards topping the individual charts in the NCAA. And we're underway here in Easton. And we'll see how this battle goes. Last year it was a tight win for Holy Cross, 16 to 14. In fact, the Leopards. Three of their seven losses in Patriot League play last year came by two goals or fewer, all of which they had either a second half leader were tied heading into the final six minutes here. Holy Cross with the opening draw and quickly in attack, they work it into the eight meter. And the opportunity will come from Andre Mandaro, the junior from Garden City, New York. So a chance here already for Quinn Lacey to get herself acclimated, has a 50 plus save percentage in five of six games and makes one here. So a great way to start by the sophomore keeper, Quinn Lacey, product of Glenhead, New York, and doing just a phenomenal job early on this season. Ball lost by the Leopards, ground ball situation coming up and that's picked up by Holy Cross, so a failed clear to start things off for the Leopards and now in transition, Holy Cross looks to get going. No free hands as the ball was worked inside the arc. And it's passed up top to slow things down. So Annalise Kinney lost the handle. Holy Cross picked up the ground ball, quickly went the other way. And actually, Izzy Grant, who had the ground ball, now has a free position opportunity coming up. Actually, no, not Grant. It's looking at the wrong hash there. But here comes the shot. This time, clanks off the post. And a ground ball pickup by Holy Cross. So things going a little bit awry there for Holy Cross in its second free position opportunity. Both of these sides really great at creating pressure inside the arc 10 free position shots attempted by the leopards per game eight by holy cross here at another shot this time wide of the mark by izzy grant backed up by the crusaders but the leopards really dominant 
at the 8 meter. 28 goals compared to just 5 by their opponents with a 60 to 18 shot advantage. Here's another one hopper off the mark. And there's going to be a late whistle called here. Another 8 meter coming up. That was after the shot. So it'll be another opportunity from the eight meter. This time a shot wide of the mark again by Grant. Quick opportunity thrown up top but high. And tracked down by the Leopards. And they have some favorable numbers with Gene Kirby racing ahead. A four on three pass intended for Novik. Need to be picked up on the ground. Novik on the drive. Doesn't see much there and passes it off. Yeah, so the Leopards, eight. 60 to 18 advantage in terms of free position shots over the first six games, but particularly they were phenomenal in the first five where they allowed only 10 shots. It was Binghamton in Lafayette's last game that went four of eight from the eight meter. However, the Leopards, they've been unable to get anything of their own offensively. And they turn it over with Holy Cross now looking to clear. Been some early ball control issues for the Leopards, a team that's been fairly good though terms of protecting the ball. 65th in the nation and turnovers per game right around the middle tier of Division I women's lacrosse. In fact, the Leopards already talked about Lacey leading the way in save percentage as a team. The Leopards are first as a pass in traffic here off the mark, but picked back up by the Crusaders. Knocked down again. Second ground ball coming up this time by Jolie Creo. Creo throws it up top, and the Crusaders now will look to set up their offense with 40 seconds left to go in the shot clock. Full attack. Great work by Lacey. Cut off the angle on the catch and shoot, and she stuffs Keeley Connors. So a second save already by Quinn Lacey and the Leopards race ahead the other way. Annalise Kinney with the successful clear. And the Leopards look to get going in attack, no score, just about four minutes in. This is a Leopard side that towards the tail end of 2017 when they made the Patriot League tournament and last year, saw opponents really attack them with pace and Goal scoring totals tended to float up a bit higher, but they've done a great job defending that dynamic this year. Novik on the dodge, two cuts, continues forward, but her shot's denied. And that's a great job in cage by Juliana Kugler. Eventually a ground ball pickup goes to the Crusaders and they'll look to clear. Both sides have been good on the ride, limiting their opponents to a sub-80 clear percentage. Ball on the ground here, and picked up by the Leopards. Really, both teams love to attack, create eight meter opportunities, but also create turnovers on the ride. And that means we're gonna be seeing these side race back and forth a lot in this one, despite no goal scored in the first five minutes. Leopards now in attack again. The first shot was on a beautiful individual effort by Novik, but just denied point blank by Kubler. Novik on the drive, loses the handle. Uh, race to win the ball goes out of bounds, and it will remain with the Leopards at 54 on the shot clock. Lafayette ranking. 44th in a nation in scoring offense, just under 13 goals per game. And here actually we're gonna see possession instead go to Holy Cross. So initially it looked like it would be the Leopards ball, but Holy Cross instead has it. Also of note the Leopards 19th in free position shooting at 46.7%. Clears good by Holy Cross, a foul called against Colleen Bannon and the Leopards.
Holy Cross leading the way early and shooting five to one, including all three eight meter attempts. But no score here. Lacey comes out, the deke by the defender, the pass in traffic denied right at the crease. I don't know how that one didn't become a shot after the dodge by Mandaro. She looked for the pass instead and the Leopards were there defensively. And now after drawing the foul, they'll look to clear. But a great job by Quinn Lacey coming out of cage, being smart in terms of when to come out. But that aggressiveness is really carried over from the work of her former senior teammate, Anna Raymond. Also, Dulce Del Priori came up big on that sequence. Here, though, the Leopard stopped on a save. And back we go the other way. Again, early on, we're racing back and forth between these two sides. Novik tried to force the ball out of bounds on the ride. I believe she ended up going offside, so it should be. We're just going to call it a straight foul here. No shot clock reset. Pressure continues from the Leopards on the restart. Dodge is good, though. Feet up top on the run. And a shooting space foul called. And that's where the Leopards kind of got caught in the pickle after the two-on-one. You have just a player kind of impeding the progress of Bryn Carroll in no man's land. So Carroll will try to get Holy Cross the lead. And she'll finish it through. So there it is, the first goal of the game. More than seven minutes in on the fourth eight meter opportunity by the Crusaders. It's one nothing Holy Cross. And for Bryn Carroll, the junior from Hollis, New Hampshire, that is her 10th goal of the season. Finishes low and right. She's had at least three free position shots three times this season as Carroll. And now five of 13 from the eight meter this season. Carroll on the board. The Leopards right now in what is usually their wheelhouse, the back and forth play, struggling to keep up with the pace of Holy Cross. Let's see how they make adjustments moving forward. And that really, I think, will be key. That's why we had... Connors, the impact player for Holy Cross, and Davey, the impact player for Lafayette, because it's going to be coming down to different things each individual can do beyond just the rapid goal scoring. Situations like the draw here. And that's one by Holy Cross. Almost won by Hannah Davey, but instead Margaret Mitchell of Holy Cross got it. And now Connors trying to split two defenders, draws the foul. Exciting start to this one. A little trip called against Emma Novick, who's stepped up her game as a senior defensively. Not just on the ride, but in the set defense. On the restart. Holy Cross looks to get things going here. Hands get maybe free, and they're going to call a late whistle after the shot. The officials, they need to start being quicker on this. These are seemingly stops for the Leopards, and then after the shot, the whistle's called. So it'll be another free position attempt coming up. And a one hopper, that's off the mark. Quick scramble pick up by the Crusaders. They couldn't get a second shot, then the pass off the mark. Connors just took her eye off the ball. Leopards 
try to get to that 30 yard line to get ready for it, they stepped over. So it's an offside against the Leopards and a fresh 90 for Holy Cross. That last free position came from Maraid Anderson. You have two Maraids wearing number 12 today. Jans are for the Leopards, Anderson for Holy Cross. And there's a one hopper that's through. Catherine Guanacci on the board. Guanchi, excuse me. And that makes it a 2-0 Holy Cross lead. And the Crusaders just utilizing their speed in the early stages of this game. Nice high hop off the turf. Lacey Reddit just couldn't get that stick back high enough for the save. As you can see, the sixth goal of the season by Glanchi. We're going to see a lot of this back and forth action here, but the Leopards, they have to start getting some momentum in their favor. By the way, the sixth different goal for Glanchi, or sixth different game with a goal for Glanchi this season. She's yet to have a multi-goal game, but maybe a chance here today. It'll be Connors for Holy Cross and Caroline Colonel, a freshman for the Leopards at the draw circle. Colonel ranking second on the team in draw controls. At least three draw controls in five of six games so far this season. 25 total on the year. And the Leopards able to control this draw and now an opportunity to get that offense going. You've yet to see Jane Kirby offer a shot yet. Led the nation last year in shots per game, and we've already mentioned number one in free position goals per game. And unfortunately, the Leopards with the turnover, a sloppy start on offense handling the ball. They've given Holy Cross a bunch of offensive opportunities the other way. This time, a shot saved by Lacey. Read that one all the way, and her pass leads to an attacker slipping, Courtney Sheets. Luckily a foul. So two nothing, the score remains. Long pass here, a good one. So the clear is good. Only on it's been ball control issues for the Leopards. Bella Alampi, nothing there in terms of getting the hands free. So she dumps it off back to Kirby. Four Lafayette turnovers to date compared to just two shots, both of which have been on goal. Roll dodge is good. Flag goes up for a foul, and we'll see if the Leopards have their first eight-meter opportunity coming up. Olivia Cunningham, the freshman, created the pressure, and Holy well, Cross tried to get the slide there in time. Didn't work out in their favor. And we'll see the first time the freshman from Collegeville, Pennsylvania with an eight meter opportunity. We'll see if she takes a shot from a tough angle. Remains patient and the shot denied by Kubler. Heavy rebound though, goes back inside the crease. And it's a great start for Juliana Kubler, the junior. Entered the game with a 12.81 goals allowed average and a 40.6 save percentage. Aggressive feed near the post off the mark and the Leopards pick it up. A little bit of weaving by the freshman Lily Bedell and the pass is off. Bedell has started all seven games as a freshman, the product of Rumson Fairhaven High School. Leopards with a good clear here, still looking for that first goal of the game more than 10 minutes in. Anna Stein on the dodge, one hopper shot goes in and the Leopards on the board. The sophomore Anna Stein makes it a 2-1 game, eighth goal of the season by Stein, who's normally facilitating the offense, but 
She's really stepping up her game 1v1 this season as a sophomore. Great dodge. And hopefully that's what the doctor ordered for the Leopards. Anna Stein makes it 2-1. And we will see if Leopards can get this in their favor. And now they officially will go for the media timeout. We were waiting for it here. But we'll step off to a quick break. Holy Cross leads early 2-1 on the Lafayette Sports Network presented by the Patriot League Network on Stadium. Three, two, one. What we've been doing here is evaluating different modes of travel of deer through human beings or through a computer in our driving simulator. We would like to create a harder to avoid obstacle that could then be used to develop better autonomous cars. How the simulator actually works is you're driving along a road using a virtual reality headset. A deer shows up in the road, you react to it and that reaction sends signals to three or four programs into our computer and send signals back into the motors and make you feel as if we're actually accelerating in a real car. We tested several models of deer against human beings so that over time it will learn how to be as hard to avoid as possible. The data that we're gathering can be used as a benchmark for autonomous car developers to develop avoidance algorithms that could better avoid deer or other animals that are statistically harder to avoid by people. So the Leopards finally on the board thanks to the sophomore Anna Stein. And a fast pace to this one early. The defense is holding their own. Holy Cross leads by a 2-1 to one score. Adam Dobrovolsky, thank you so much for tuning in today. Stein scored seven goals in her first three games in her sophomore campaign, including hat tricks at St. Bonaventure and at Temple. Did not score a goal in the last three, but kept an active five-game assist streak going. But Stein gets the tally here. And let's see what the draw control has to offer out of the timeout. Lafayette in the home white today. Only cross in the visiting purple, and for those of you just tuning in, the Leopards from our vantage point going right to left in this first half. Draw control won by Holy Cross, and Connors nearly threw it right to Bella Alampi. Lucky bounce off the cross to collect the pass. Emma Novik continues to apply pressure. You're going to see both sides aggressive on both sides of the ball. Pressure, pressure, pressure. There's a beautiful feed on the run, and the finish gets through. Well, that's the one negative defensively. When you're aggressive, sometimes things pop open. 3-1, Holy Cross leads. All right, on the run, the recipient, Baker Earl, the senior from Ridgewood, New Jersey. One of the top reserves on this team and a captain. And 42 goals between her sophomore and junior seasons. This is her fourth in her senior campaign. Right now, Holy Cross looking very good. And tough to tell sometimes from non league action exactly where these teams will have their seasons go come Patriot League play. Holy Cross drubbed Central Connecticut 20 to three. A team that's two and four. Drubbed Hartford 21 to nine, a team that's 0 and eight. Their five losses against teams with a combined 19 and 17 record. So strength of opponent perhaps influencing that two and five record for the Crusaders. But they're off to a good start here, although the Leopards control the draw this time. Ball lost by Elise Ashford. And we head the other way. Pass received on one hop. And there's just been ball control issues for the Leopards early on, thanks to this Holy Cross pressure. Five 
Leopard turnovers in the first 12 minutes of the game. Nice dodge, the shot though, save. Quinn Lacey got that stick low. Amelia Heisler picks up the ground ball. And the Leopards begin the clear. Now the clear's good. Fake of the pass, free hands coming up here and the shot saved by Kubler. Juliana Kubler earning her start today, although the pass thrown right back to Stein. Ray Janzer looking for the dodge, nothing there. Gives it back to Stein. Leopards try to get the pressure going there, and that lone Holy Cross defender helping out. If you look at the scoreboard, you're thinking maybe this one's going to be like the Leopards' first loss of the season, which came at Manhattan. That was a 9-7 to game, but the Jaspers, they're more of the slow, methodical type team. They've held their opponents to single digits quite often this season and route to their 5-2 and two start. I think the scoring is going to get going at some point here. Maybe a chance for Bella Alampi. She earned the 8-meter opportunity here. Junior from Mars, Pennsylvania, but her shot denied. A little bit of trouble on the ground ball pickup, but eventually won by Stein. And the Leopards have a fresh 90 pressure on by Holy Cross and a foul call. Kubler again with the stop, has five saves early on. Nice dodge by Novick, but a foul called. And another eight meter opportunity awarded. And he might be on pace for more than 20 today between these two sides, the way it's going. On average, if you take the two team season average, you're expecting 18 today. Novick. The captain with the finish and the Leopards on the board. 56th career game for Novik and she scored in 55 of them. 3-2. And pretty simple and routine there on the 8 meter. Novik and her career has a free position goal now in 36 of 56 career games. 46 career free position goals. And it's on the score 3 2 here. On the 12th tally by Novik, who is in her sixth game of the season. She missed the season opener at St. Bonaventure, was dealing with a week by week injury, but. Came back against Iona, the home opener this season, got a hat trick and has multi-goal games in each of our first five this year. Draw control won by the Crusaders. And so Holy Cross is trying to get it right back to a multi-goal lead. They had the first two goals of the game to grab the lead and the Leopards have yet to tie since. Spreading out the Lafayette defenders. Gets the dodge and the goal. Izzy Grant on the board to make it 4-2. Well, the thing is, if you play so tight up top, you have to make sure that the footwork is good defensively. And just an extra step there by the attacker, Grant, to get by Bella Alampi. 11th of the season, as you see, for Grant. Sophomore from Malvern, New York. 
ranks second on the team in goal scoring. Two hat tricks this season against Central Connecticut State and Siena. It's also put together three ground balls and four calls turnovers over her team's first seven games. start on the draw control they'll try again these two teams by expectation of the Patriot League quite close Holy Cross the preseason number seven Lafayette the preseason number eight draw control won by the Leopards this time due to the Holy Cross foul so a chance to get it right back to one goal game. Stein leans in, weaves, draws contact. And that should be an eight meter opportunity coming up for Stein, the product of Darien, Connecticut, who went undefeated in her high school career for a four time state champion in Darien. Ops not to shoot here. With the feed to Hannah Davey. Nice dodge by Jane Kirby to the doorstep, but denied by Kubler. Every rebound goes nearest to a leopard. And a wise decision by Hannah Davey to let it go out of bounds. You kind of feel like the leopards right now are on a step behind Holy Cross, and Kubler has a big role in that so far. Six saves compared to just two goals allowed at this point. Holy Cross double teams Davey. Davey still under pressure. Finds Colleen Bannon who dodges her defender, gets to the doorstep, and draws the foul. It is going to be tough for her to get the shot off. And as we look at the replay, I don't fully see if that swipe by Bryn Carroll is what caused a foul if it was contact before that. Bannon on the 8 meter, another save by Kubler. Ground ball pickup by the Leopards. Davey hits a hands free and is denied again. What a start by Juliana Kubler. This is a keeper who, in her first six games, three of them starts three in relief. Playing just over 178 minutes, did not have more than six saves in a game. That was at Villanova. But already with eight saves in this opening half. If you're the Leopards, yeah, you're frustrated, but I'd make the argument you just keep doing what you're doing and eventually things will start to fall your way. 4-2 to two the score. And hey, it was Lacey coming into the game with the Division I lead and save percentage. She makes one here already her sixth. Each side with 10 shots on goal. Great pressure by Holy Cross. The ride is successful for them. Causing a failed clear by the Leopards. And quickly back into attack. More than halfway through this first stanza, a 4-2 Holy Cross lead. Great work by Bannon and Lacey there to communicate when Lacey came out. They didn't allow the shot. Keely Connors, team leader in both goals and draw controls, gives it away. Goes back to Connors. Standout senior. Now a feed. A lot of traffic there for Riley Burkle, so she passes it up top. Feed towards the doorstep, pinballs off a Lafayette stick. Lacey tried to come out to win the ground ball, but Holy Cross gets back to it. Feed from X, the shot denied by Lacey. No, it gets through. 
It got through. Holy Cross on the board to make it 5-2, and we'll have to look at a replay of this one. It looked like at first, Lacey got a stop. See here on the second replay, and uh, that one tucked through it, actually kind of hid inside the netting. That's why it looked like it was stopped. It's from our vantage point up here in the press box. Kind of tough to see, but Riley Burkholtz on the board. And Burkholtz giving Holy Cross his biggest lead of the game on what is her fourth tally of the season. A junior. And a goal on four ground balls at Monmouth for her season best performance. Connors couldn't get a clean grab of the ball, but on her second effort gets to it for the draw control. Great pressure by the Leopards, but a foul called. Cross now on attack here. Boy, have they come to play ready to go on the road. And the Leopards on their heels a bit, to be honest. Very rarely do teams beat them at their game, which is the sheer pace of play and aggressiveness. Connors receives the ball. On the run, second Leopard comes to help out. Ball on the ground, pops back to Burgholtz, but a foul called. Burgholtz looked like maybe a free run to go 1v1 against the keeper, but a late whistle there by the officials. It's been a few tardy whistles, but give credit to the officials. They're dealing with a lot of pace here. They have to make calls quickly on the fly. Kirby with the dodge and the goal. Jane Kirby, the team's leader in goal scored this season, makes it five to three. Kirby's been getting the job done primarily at the eight meter. There she didn't even need it. Kirby, 17 of her first 21 goals, free position shooting. That's 80.95%, but one here in this game, 22 now on the season. And just the fifth and free flowing action. Career goal 136, that's two shy of Emma Novick's 138 for the active career lead on this Lockett women's lacrosse squad. And might have the rare scenario where two players from the same graduating class finished with at least 150 goals. If that pace continues for both Kirby and Novick. Really a strong senior class for the Lafayette side. Not just Kirby and Novick. Our impact player today, Hannah Davey, Annalise Kinney, Amelia Heisler, Elise Ashford all getting starts. Ray Janzer is one of the top reserves. Two-way player. Gets it done, especially in attack. And you're talking right there, just seven among those top players. That's really what's going to lead this Lafayette side during this Patriot League schedule. Draw control for Holy Cross. Tough swim there, but out of pressure by Izzy Grant. So 
five to three the score. The Leopards have yet to score consecutive goals in this game with just about 10 minutes left to go in the first half. They're going to need to find a way to get a run going. Beautiful feed, but they couldn't catch the ball cleanly on the pass intended for Bryn Carroll. A break for the Leopards because that could have been a point blank shot. A little bit of trouble here for Lily Bedell, but she grabs the ball. And now a feed. Hannah Davey races ahead. Takes the shot, and that's denied by Kubler. Well, good work defensively, not just by Kubler in the save, but on the run by Davey, that could have been a scenario where she created an eight meter by shooting space, but Holy Cross defended that well and forced a tough angle on the shot. Back the other way, a goal scored. And the Crusaders say, hey, you want pace? We got it. And that goal scored by Bryn Carroll, who atones for the turnover in the last possession. Actually, no, make that Jolie Creo on the finish. And Creo, the freshman from Rockville Center, New York, on the board with her ninth tally of the season. So Holy Cross on the road, leading 6-3. to three. 9.20 left to go in this first half of action, and we'll have more right after this. You're watching the Lafayette Sports Network presented by the Patriot League Network on Stadium. You work hard with drive and with passion. Late nights, early mornings, but it's not for nothing. You are working toward the moment, this moment. Pace and goalkeeping so far leading the way for Holy Cross as they lead 6-3 with 9.20 left to go. Juliana Kubler already with a season high, nine saves. And between that and the pace of play that Holy Cross has been able to just have a fraction of a step faster than Lafayette, they've built this three-goal lead. Six goals scored by six different players for the Crusaders. In fact, in this game, nine goals scored by nine different players. Another big factor of note. The turnovers. And here a violation against Holy Cross. Gives a draw control to the Leopards. Now six to four in favor of Holy Cross on the draw. Kirby attracts attention from the slide. A little duck and roll on the dodge to throw it up top. Novik uses her speed, gets free hands and scores. And it's another multi-goal game for Emma Novik Sixth game of her senior campaign, sixth multi-goal game, 13th of the season. And this is all speed. Blow by of the defender, get the hands free, down the lane. Wonderful work and not much Catherine Guanchi could do about it. You know, you're in a tough situation there as a defender because if you obstruct the progress, Novik's going to the eight meter, but obviously if you're not perfect on cutting off the angle and you're a little bit flat-footed, a player like Novik's just gonna blow right by you. So Novik, the first multi-goal scorer in this game, and it is in fact 
Novick's 43rd career multi-goal game. 56 career games for her. Colonel gets a draw control for the Leopards. Lafayette looking for its first consecutive goal string. Colonel attracts attention, couldn't get the hands free, dumps it off. All 13 shots so far by the Leopards are on target. Holy Cross had a string early with three consecutive shots off target. Every other one's been on goal. So both of these sides making the best bang for their buck offensively. Kirby gets a dodge, splits two defenders, draws contact, and a player who has attempted a free position shot in 23 consecutive games, as well as 30 of her last 31, heads to the eight meter here. 17 of 26 this season. Leads the way in free position goals per game. However, denied by Kubler. 2.83 FPGs per game. Pass up ahead's off the mark. Foul will call it against Lafayette though. Kubler already with double digit saves. Beautiful roll dodge, but the ball swatted away. By Amelia Heisler, Annalise Kinney was also there. The score remains 6-4 in favor of Holy Cross as the Leopards look to clear here. Past midfield. And it's dumped off by Annalise Kinney. Here's a good one. I think uh, a little bit of a confusion here with the officials. I think Holy Cross might have had a player off. Holy Cross fans want the call against Lafayette to be offside. Either way, the Leopards will have a fresh 90. They have Annalise Kinney doing a great job on defense. Amelia Heisler as well. And Lacey saving 50% of the shots on target so far. Leopard's trying to get it within one here. Nice lean in the shot though. I never have gotten to Kubler. Picked up by Holy Cross. Pass though off the mark. Novick racing ahead, trying to get to the ball first, and a foul called against her. A for effort there. Trying to slow down this clear attempt by Holy Cross, another foul against Lafayette. That was a nice grab by Connors. That was right near the bell and she had to reach that cross in in the basket to catch it cleanly. Roll dodge to the post and the finish. Holy Cross back ahead seven to four. And whatever Lafayette has had, there's been an answer by the Crusaders. That goal scored by Creo, her second. and did a beautiful job to walk the line, so to say, to avoid the crease. Second look at it, I don't see any feet stepping on that white crease. Tenth of the season by Creo. amount of wind gusts here at Fisher Stadium but overall a beautiful Saturday afternoon it was a really nice yesterday afternoon temperatures reaching the 70s before a band of severe weather 
hit the area for about an hour or so in the evening. That included some hail in parts of the Lehigh Valley and the Garden State. Foul calling against Holy Cross as Anna Stein got the clear good off the turnover. Annalise Kinney had the cause turnover. Annalise, the daughter of baseball head coach Joe Kinney. And the baseball team facing Wofford this weekend. Lafayette with another turnover. We go back the other way. Holy Cross with the feed lane open to the left side and shooting space caught. Not much Del, C, Del Prior can do about that. Lacey's going to need to come up big here. Holy Cross looking for its biggest lead of the game. The defense helps out, forces a shot off the mark, backed up by the Crusaders. Lafayette keeping that pressure up tight even behind goal line extended free hands and that is denied by Lafayette well the wind is blowing here at Fisher Stadium and a little tool of the trade when you're calling the game up top here in the press box you look to see if the net ripples the net rippled from the wind not from the shot going in good work though by Quinn Lacey but that makes it a little bit tough visually when you Looking for those visual cues. Nice feed and the finish. Hannah Davey makes it seven to five. Three and a half minutes left to go. A beautiful feed by Kirby to get it within two. That's pretty simple for Kirby. Can keep flat footed and a pass right on the mark. That's where the credit really has to be given to Jane Kirby, the senior from Florence Prep. You can take that easily from granted. You want your teammate to catch that ball on the run to where you can have free hands to finish. And Davey on the board, our impact player from today's pregame show as her 14th goal of the season. Although the Leopards have not led in this game and they have not had consecutive goals in the game, they have been able to keep it within three goals. So really, it's back and forth. Again, just a step ahead here by Holy Cross. The 10 saves by Juliana Kubler right now is looking like the biggest difference. Everything else has gotten roughly even on the comparative stat sheet, team-wise at least. It's gonna be right down to the wire. That's what we expected. Plenty of offensive fireworks in a close game. Anna Davey takes a pretty heavy shot there. That was close enough to maybe being a card. But no card there. Jane Kirby has it for the Leopards. Feeds it. And another extra pass here to work it behind goal line extended. Stein stops, weaves. Now Kirby has it, laying the shoot. And that actually, you think, hit a leopard. Well, that's why they have the shooting space fouls. And it's actually Kirby sent off for the dangerous shot. Well, you can't take that for granted. It can be dangerous in that type of scenario. And 
that's the freshman Olivia Cunningham. Tries to duck out of the way. And right now for the Leopards, they're going to be short a player on the field due to the card, but they might be short a player as well due to injury in the long run here. Cunningham's a solid freshman campaign, five goals, two assists. In fact, in Lafayette's come from behind 13 to 12 win at Binghamton this week. She earned her first career multi-goal game and she's had at least a goal and assist in her last two. And she'll head off for now. Hopefully we'll have a chance to head back on the field. It's frustrating from a spectator standpoint when you see these shooting space fouls cause eight meters awarded, but it's there for a reason and is there to protect the players and Don Comp, the athletic trainer, oh, look to check on Olivia Cunningham and see if she can come back into the game. But now Holy Cross will look to take advantage of the yellow card assessed to Jean Kirby. I believe that's the first card for either side in this game. Kirby, of course, now will have to be diligent on the ride. You don't want to get another card because if you get two yellow cards, then you're not allowed to return into the game. Happens on occasion. Not very common, but. Here comes Holy Cross looking to clear. Man up. Pass not caught cleanly, but enough space to get the ground ball from a Raid Anderson. Anderson with a successful clear now. And Holy Cross has a chance to keep momentum in their favor with a goal here. If Holy Cross doesn't score, it'll probably take the clock down to under 40 seconds for the Leopards to have themselves or under a minute, I should say. Really, here though will be a free position opportunity for Izzy Grant. Quinn Lacey with seven saves to date. I'd love to get one here. Grant's shot is high, and the Leopards. Well, not there to back it up. I thought they were close. That free position shot by Grant, the team's seventh in the first half. Connors will try again on the roll dodge. And a save by Lacey. Ground ball pickup by the Leopards. And Holy Cross can get more aggressive here on the ride if they so choose. They're under a minute left to go. And the penalty, and the Leopards throw it away. Had an opportunity. Nice dodge here in the finish. Eight to five. And those little plays, they're gonna come back to hurt you. Unforced mistake on the clear. And when you're down a player, it leaves things wide open the other way. Nothing that either and Elise Ashford or Quinn Lacey could do about it. You just can't turn it over. That's the ninth first half turnover by the Leopards. Maggie Moriarty got the goal her third of the season. Moriarty's primarily the distributor, leads the team in assists this season with eight coming into the game. 
for her career. Had a team high 16 last year. So final minute here, and now a draw controlled by Holy Cross. it goes 30 seconds left to go Holy Cross just looking to take it down towards the end before taking a shot for the shot clock off Connors looks for a shot that was too far of a distance Lafayette backs up so they have one chance here They're just going to soak out the clock. That'll do it for the first half of action. The Leopards just couldn't get any run going. And that has a lot to do with the goalkeeping of Juliana Kubler. Ten first half saves for her. Quinn Lacey's had eight. A lot of pace in this one. Holy Cross leads eight to five through 30 minutes of action. We'll have the halftime report coming up after this as you're watching the Lafayette Sports Network presented by the Patriot League Network on Stadium. You know, to me, this is a really exciting day for athletics at Lafayette College. You know, this is really a moment when we both um, celebrate what we've accomplished in the past, but talk about how we will move forward in the future and the exciting vision that we, we know will take us there. I think you'll find that there is support um, across the college community and support certainly from myself and from the administration in moving towards the important vision that Sharita is going to unveil today. Our students come to Lafayette because they know the rigorous academic environment that we provide will be the foundation upon which many future successes can be built. There are people who support Lafayette Athletics and this college wholeheartedly and believe in the vision for what we have and what we can do for this program. I know it's not going to be easy. I know it's going to take a lot of work and a lot of conversations, but I think if we approach it together, we can achieve our goals. And so that's what I'm looking forward to. I'm, I'm looking forward to rolling up my sleeves and working with every single one of you in this room to get it done. Together, we will create a championship culture. We will be champions. Go Leopards. Farmers, we've seen almost everything, so we know how to cover almost anything, even a cactus calamity. I read that the saguaro can live to be 200 years old. How old do you think that one is? Uh, my guess would be about... I'd say about 200. Yeah. Gives houseplant a whole new meaning. And we covered it. Talk to farmers. We know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Okay, Ricky Walters, your word is TiVo-tacular. Could you use it in a sentence, please? RCN's digital TV is TiVo-tacular. TiVo-tacular? That's easy. It's spelled R-C-N. That's correct. TiVo from RCN gives you spectacular TV at an amazing price. It's TiVo-tacular. RCN, entertainment redefined. 30 minutes complete, and Holy Cross on the road with a three-goal lead. It's 8-5. to five. Here as we go to the halftime report, Adam Dobrovsky here from the press box at Fisher Stadium. Thank you so much for tuning in today. As This one we expected to be one of pace. Both sides like to push the tempo. They like to get inside the shooting arc. They like to create turnovers off the ride. And Holy Cross, they've had just an extra step ahead of the Leopards for much of the game, but... You've seen a lot of shots, a lot of shots on target so far in this one. 31 shots on goal combined between these two sides. And it's been good individual efforts by Holy Cross. They've been able to spread out the wealth. 
with only one player having a multi-goal game. The Leopards only have one multi-goal scorer as well so far. But right now the difference, probably just that little extra moves like this off turnovers by Holy Cross and also the goalkeeping by Juliana Kubler coming into the game accounting for just over 42% of minutes played by a Holy Cross keeper and 10 first half saves by her. Maybe perhaps making the argument that she deserves to play the full 60 today. Quinn Lacey has eight for the Leopards. Shots 22 to 16, but much closer in terms of shots on goal. 16 by Holy Cross, 15 by Lafayette. The nine turnovers, big right now for, for the Leopards. They need to cut that down, although that is roughly about the season average. There have been some costly turnovers that have led to Holy Cross goals, or they've been turnovers where the Leopards haven't been able to get a shot on goal or even a shot in the possession. And also, no, Holy Cross a little bit in the advantage of the ground balls 12 to 8. And that has been helping out Holy Cross also 8 to 5 in draw controls and 7 to 5 in free position shots in the first half of action. Individually speaking, the two multi goal scorers you have the freshman Jolie Creo for Holy Cross and the senior Emma Novick for the Leopards. Shot disp uh, disparity or um, Suspension, whatever you want to call it, is pretty even among the two sides as well. The leader for Holy Cross, Izzy Grant with four. Jane Kirby equal to that with four. And then, as mentioned, the saves so far. Kubler had a, a season-high six goal or six saves against Villanova coming into this game, already surpassing that in the first 30 here today. So interesting to see from that first half how these two sides – uh, we'll make the adjustments, but this the Patriot League opener. It's going to be a season of adjustments moving forward throughout the Patriot League schedule. We have a chance to look at the standings, though. And Navy's done a great job. They are ranked uh, 15th in the nation. Army West Point's been off to a great start. They just very recently suffered their first loss of the season against Villanova, and they were... Receiving votes in the media polls per inside the cross. Uh, but the Leopards, 4-2. and two, American, 5-3. and three, Boston and Lehigh, 4-3. and three, And Loyola, although 3-3, three and three, still 12th ranked in the nation because those losses have been to really good opponents. And they even pulled off a win against a ranked Florida side. Uh, so right now, there's a lot of depth in this league. And even Holy Cross at 2-5, and five, they've looked good so far in this first game. There's going to be no easy out for the Leopards this season in the Patriot League. Before we get to the second half of action, though, we want to take a little step away from women's lacrosse and look at a day in the life of E.J. Stevens. Hello, my name is E.J. Stevens, and I'm a psychology major here at Lafayette. I'm a sophomore and play for the men's basketball team. Everyone always wants to know what it's like being a Division I athlete, so I'm going to run you through an average day for me. I start my day by going to class in Oxley, the psychology building at 8 o'clock. In sports psychology, we are currently talking about how confidence affects players' performance during gameplay. Professor Longshore is a sports psychologist herself, so she really goes in depth about the subject, which helps me understand the material even better. Professor Longshore's doors are always open and is always very willing to help students in any way possible. Then I make my way over to the Maroon Club training facility where I get in a morning workout. I live with Coach Plum. Lafayette has some of the best facilities in the Patriot League. The weight room is a very high-tech and equipped with over a dozen iPads at the ready to help athletes be even more efficient with their lifts. The staff here at Lafayette are amazing. They are always making sure athletes are in the best position possible to win and compete. Weightlifting is an important part of being an athlete because during the course of a long season, you need to make sure you are maintaining your muscle that you gain in the offseason, which enhances your performance on the court. This is especially important during Patriot League play when the games continue to get tougher both physically and mentally. Once I finish lift, I grab a quick shower, head over to Farinon, and have lunch with a few of my teammates. We usually talk about what's going on in the world of basketball. One perk of being a student athlete is being able to hang out with your teammates off the court. These are friendships that will last a lifetime. After lunch, I hit the books and study for upcoming classes. Even though I am a student athlete, I still find time to prepare for my classes and any upcoming tests I may have. One of my favorite places to study is the third floor on Kirby Sports Center. It is usually quiet up there and has a great view of the football stadium. After studying, I usually head over to practice. 
I always enjoy going to practice because I get to compete with my teammates, which makes us all better and gets us closer to our goal of winning the Patriot League Championship. Once practice is over, I head back to my room or the library to prepare for the next day where I do it all over again. And that's a normal day of a life of a student athlete. My name is EJ Stevens, and I'll see you in Kirby. And there you see a day in the life of EJ Stevens for Lafayette men's basketball on Fran O'Hanlon's side. This season was the seventh seed in the Patriot League tournament. We'll head off to a quick break. Second half action coming up for women's lacrosse right after this break as you're watching the Lafayette Sports Network presented by the Patriot League Network on Stadium. What does it mean to be great? What does it take to be the best? It's a change, a commitment, a championship mindset. Every now and then, there comes a moment when sheer will and perseverance replaces mediocrity. A moment when okay is not okay anymore. When good enough no longer cuts it. When being exceptional every day is the new standard. This is that moment. This is about transforming a culture. It's about putting our coaches and student athletes in the best position possible to succeed. It's about changing the narrative of what it means to be a leopard. Wising to the end zone, it is caught, touchdown, Morazic holds it in. We are committed, we are united, we will climb the hill. We will be champions. Going behind the scenes with ESPN's Beth Moans was a once-in-a-lifetime experience. It was really cool to see what it takes to produce a big-time college basketball broadcast. Lafayette connects students with alumni at hundreds of different companies and nonprofits every year. It's a great chance to network. I got a first-hand look at a career and got to see whether it was right for me. At the end of this, I'm one step closer to finding my dream job. St. Luke's Orthopedic Care. Extraordinary care in motion. Adjustments needed for the Leopards as they trail by three heading into the second half of action. Adam Dabrowski here. Thank you so much for tuning in for today's action in the Patriot League opener for these two sides. The finals coming in as the first day of action goes in league play and Right now, the Leopards hoping that they are one of five sides with that well, first that door down W. Well, locked, isn't it, to get to the elevator? Yeah, so they're letting them in. Leopards will be going from left to right in the second half of action. Officials still talking some things over while the players way at their respective spots. And now they're coming out the officials. Back and forth in the opening half of action. But Lafayette was not able to have any scoring run in that first half of action. Holy Cross on two different occasions the first two goals of the game and then from three two to three five had two goal runs that's pretty much it and we'll see what happens in the second half in terms of scoring runs holy cross controls the draw here racing up ahead that's defended well 
So Holy Cross will have to settle it down. Foul caught a little too much contact by the Leopards. Worked by the Leopards defense, forces the pass away. Hands get free, a save by Lacey. Couldn't locate it on the first bounce, but gets it. And that'll make it a quick ninth save for Quinn Lacey. The Leopards coming off a come from behind 13 to 12 win where getting the usual contributions from their big four, the likes of Kirby, Stein, Novick, and Davey, but it was the two freshmen, Olivia Cunningham with a pair of goals and Caroline Colonel with a hat trick that really made the difference. Cunningham had to leave the first half with an injury, taking a shot by Jane Kirby. And we get to see Colonel take a shot. However, Bella Alampi will have a chance here with an eight meter coming up. Lampy just couldn't get the shot off. Too many purple defenders there. Ground ball pickup, though, by the Leopards, and then quickly lost by Novik. She's fouled, so the Leopards will keep it. You see some of Jen Roan now on the field with Cunningham out. The second Roan sibling to play. For this program. Here's a shot by Emma Novick and it goes through. And the Leopards on the board to make it 8 6. They have the first tally of the second half and it's a hat trick for Novick. Second time she's done this. And there, a little natural pick. Caroline Wenners ended up having a half step of disadvantage against Novick and Novick finished high and right. And that is career hat trick number 27 for Novik and 56 career games. So just a little bit below one hat trick out of every two career games. That's amazing. And now 140 career goals for the captain Novik. A team captain, a Patriot League Academic Honor Roll recipient. In fact, the Leopards last year had a league high 35 players make it to the Honor Roll for the Patriot League. Yeah, a little stoppage here. The officials have to work things out, I think, with the scoreboard. Our scoreboard is showing eight to six, but the one here at Fisher Stadium has yet to get that tally on the board. Not sure what the issue is. Now it's fixed. Either way, the officials, whatever they need to fix so that tally can go on the scoreboard, it's done and over with. And now Holy Cross has possession after the foul called against the Leopards on the draw. Well, as mentioned a few times, the Leopards have yet to have consecutive goals scored in this game. That would mean Holy Cross has the next one. Here comes the shot off the mark by Creo, backed up, and a ground ball pickup by the Crusaders. Well, no better time than now to start getting that run going if you're the Leopards. Get a stop here. And work it into attack. Seven Holy Cross turnovers in the first half. And it may be every possession 
down the stretch here that matters. So even a one or two turnover differential might be enough to be the difference. Every save by the keeper, just every stop, really. Lacey with the save. And that's her 10th. Look like Catherine Guanchi had a step on her defender on the dodge and quickly decided to shoot from some distance. Pass on the run, not caught cleanly by Davey. Help will come from Colleen Bannon. And the Leopards will now have their desired seven in attack. Rowan from X. Tosses it up top. Kirby. Gets by one defender. Takes the shot. Another save by Kubler. Scramble to get the rebound here outside of the crease. A sea of sticks eventually won by Holy Cross. Kubler denying Kirby got her 11th save, nearly a turnover back the other way as Kirby applies the pressure. And now gets called for the foul. Both sides did fairly well clearing the ball in the first half despite the riding pressure that both sides like to give. Clear here is good. So Holy Cross has a chance to get back up by three. Wrap all the way around. No shot there by Audrey Mandaro. A pass instead of the roll dodge behind goal line extended now to GLE. V to the doorstep and the finish. Bryn Carroll on the board. Holy Cross back up by three. Every time the Leopards want to get something going, Holy Cross has had a response. And if you're the Leopards, you're going to have to impose your will, defend this home turf. At some point, you're going to need a run to get back into it. And tie this up or grab the lead. Carroll with her second of the game. And now her fourth multi-goal game of 2019. Season high was four goals at Hartford to tie a career high. Exactly five minutes elapsed in this second half. By the way, Maggie Moriarty got the assist on that goal. And she now has two assists for the game. Leopards get called for the foul. And so draw control goes to Holy Cross. And they've continued to impose their will on the draw. Blow by here and a shot off the mark. Shot attempt from Izzy Grant. Dangerous pass into the crease. It trickles in, but a, sh a I think a crease violation. What a lucky break for the Leopards. The nearest Crusader there was Emily Colbertson. Colbertson had to be the culprit. But that was a lucky break for the Leopards. And now they're saying it's Holy Cross ball. What is this? I'm not even sure. Is it a foul or is it a crease violation? I think the officials are talking it over. I mean, the ball bounced off of Leopard and went in. I would think it would be either a goal for Holy Cross or a crease violation in Lafayette ball. I didn't think there was a third option. Here's Lafayette men's lacrosse. They're checking out the game today. They've already been in Patriot League action this season, and they've 
had to face some ranked teams along the way, the likes of Army West Point and Navy. Good job, though, by the men's side. Tough, competitive 4-4 four and four teams so far this season. And tomorrow they'll be in action. The reason why they're here is, well, they don't have to travel far. They go to Bethlehem for the rivalry. And another ranked side, Lehigh. Colgate, Loyola seeing times in the rankings as well. The Patriot League men's side just as strong as ever. Still a discussion here. I, I'm kind of at a loss to see what the discussion's about. I wish I was down there to know. But they're still discussing it over right now. And they're at least one of the officials talking it over with Holy Cross head coach Amanda Belichick and Lafayette head coach Allison Fisher. For those of you Leopards fans out there wondering about Amanda Belichick, yes, Bill's daughter. Amanda also a product of Wesleyan College. It's not just football that's in the family blood, but lacrosse. Bill a big lacrosse fan. Of course, the Patriots now working on a Super Bowl defense coming up this fall. A 13-3 win in the Super Bowl. Officials still talking things over with the coaches. Very peculiar scenario here. But this could be the difference of a goal, maybe. And so that's why well, the officials need to get everything hashed out here. I think we should ask the good boy over there his thoughts. Or good girl and her thoughts, either or. And indeed, now it'll be Lafayette possession. Well, that was maybe two or three minutes of a discussion there. But in the end, I do think that was probably the right call. Probably. Turnover here, though, for the Leopards, and not the way they want to handle that clear. Passes well short of Abella Olympia. Now, Holy Cross has a chance to get it to a game high four goal lead. In the last two games for the Leopards, they've seen a multi goal lead against St. Joe's wilter away, and then they came back against Binghamton for the win. So it may be all about that. Second half action here. But an eight meter coming up for Holy Cross. Tough angle for Bryn Carroll. She's trying to work on a hat trick here. Takes the shot, saved by Lacey. Heavy rebound, but a foul called. And it's Lafayette ball. So Quinn Lacey comes up big again. Both keepers with 11 saves. And right now it's a difference of three shots on goal that has Holy Cross the lead. A pass off the mark. More trouble here on the clear, but a ground ball pickup by Lily Bedell, and Bedell gets it good for the Leopards. 9-6 Lafayette trails. Yeah, they had themselves... A 12-9 lead against St. Joe's in their last home game. Didn't score over the final 20 minutes and 9 seconds to lose 16-12. Then against Binghamton, the Leopards trailed 11-6 and over the final 21-32 went on a 7-1 run to end up winning 13-12. And after... 
A turnover. Only Cross with the clear. Last game, uh, last year's game against Holy Cross was tied heading into the final six minutes. Holy Cross pulled away to win 16 to 14. But in that game, it was the Crusaders who popped out to an early 9 to 3 lead with eight and a half minutes left to go in the opening half. Connors on the roll dodge, hands are free, shot is wide, Leopards pick up the ground ball. And now they gotta try to get through this tough Holy Cross ride. Yeah, in that game against Holy Cross, the Leopards just couldn't find a way to get a lead outside of a 2-1 lead very early. They turned a 9-3 deficit into a 13-13 tie before Holy Cross got the go-ahead goal at 527 left. Jen Roan throws it up top. Eight and a half minutes already complete in the second stanza. Emma Novick has a hat trick looking for a fourth. Clanks off the post. Heavy rebound here. Good work by Hannah Davey to cut in and win the ground ball. Fresh 90, though, awarded to the Leopards on that Davey ground ball. Novick will try again. This time, no lane to the right side. Attracts attention, double team. Hands almost free for Colonel, but now a foul called against Lafayette. The ball's on the ground too many times here for the Leopards. That's 12 turnovers. Foul called here, I think outside. We're going to give it at the toughest hash here for an 8 meter. Probably not the best idea for Emily Colbertson to shoot. Probably better to pass. And she'll do just that. 9-6 to six Holy Cross leads. The Leopards have yet to have consecutive goals scored in this game. Holy Cross, no more than a two-goal run, but could be working on their third here. A save, though, by Lacey. Heavy rebound. Picked up by Connors. Fresh 90 for Holy Cross. Again, there hasn't been too many times the Leopards have been outright bested by Holy Cross, but they have not had any stretch where they've been the better side. No foul called there as the Holy Cross shooter Maggie Moriarty hit the turf. Leopards win possession. Under pressure here. Pass midfield, Kinney sees the lane. And there's a swipe near the head. It's gonna be a card. Baker Earl sent off. The Leopards need to take advantage here. And honestly, that wasn't really necessary. Guinea, she had the lane. And it's a late swipe right over the head. That doesn't need to actually hit Annalise Kinney. If it's near that halo of the head, it's going to get you sent off. It's a dangerous play. Well, here's one thing where I disagree with the rule book. Kinney pretty much had the clear. And they force a spot. I think in the women's game, if there's a player sent off, the opponent's pos uh, possession should start in attack. They shouldn't have to pass the clear. 
happens in the men's game should happen in the women's game as well. Pass in traffic. Somehow caught cleanly by Colleen Bannon. Foul called on the pass attempt by Davey. Much to the chagrin of the fans who made the trip from Worcester, Massachusetts. But the Leopards up a man trying to convert here to make it a two-goal game. Stein shovels it to Kirby. Nothing there. Kirby gets free hands, and the shot is saved. Holy Cross under duress here. Pass a little bit off the mark, but no Leopard there. They had three up top. There's another pass off the mark. Foul called. And against Lafayette. the Leopards I keep the pressure on here although the clear is good by Holy Cross well they got the stop they needed man down the Leopards didn't late in the first half they failed to clear and right back on the turnover easily dunked home by Holy Cross and the Leopards content with Holy Cross soaking out the time of this possession to make it even strength. that's not there just yet. And now it finally is 7v7. So the penalty killed by the Crusaders. And the Leopards, whenever they've needed a play, they haven't gotten it. Whenever Holy Cross has needed a play, they've gotten it. And that's the difference right now in what has otherwise been an even battle. Those key plays are huge. Shot clock violation against Holy Cross. Again, a majority of that possession, they were just riding out the clock on the penalty. Pass, not a good one. And then a foul called against Amelia Heisler. Turnovers are killing the Leopards. Those are the key situations. You just get a stop and you give it right back without even a possession in attack. On the pass, that was short. Unforced. Shot off the mark by Carroll. Backed up by the Leopards. So another stop here for Lafayette. They gotta find a way to get the offense going. It's been pretty quiet by the top four players for the Leopards, although each have a goal. Only Novik has multiple goals, and as a result, they have just six to show for the game. And almost 45 minutes of action. As a dangerous follow through penalty call. I didn't see the player sent off, but that is what caused the delay. Bryn Carroll's off for two minutes. So Lafayette again, man up. And again, now they need to get the job done here. They have a chance to build something here if they can get it going in this possession heading into a break. Stein throws it up top. Nice swim dodge through a few players. 
but Kirby lost the handle. Second time man up, and they haven't been able to get a goal. They give it away both times. And that's the thing, you're man up, you gotta find the open player. Only Cross is defense. Really bunkering down here. Foul called against Novik. Clock continues to run here more than halfway through the second stanza. On the ground here. Heisler applying some pressure, swats it away from the Crusader, but help is right there. Penalty not yet cleared. 20 on the shot clock for the Crusaders. And now we're even strength. A second time Holy Cross. Kill the penalty. Pass not caught cleanly. Flag is up. I'm not sure for what. And that pass was not even in the fan or the arc, and they've awarded Holy Cross with an eight meter. So it had to be something Pretty serious there from Holy Cross from Lafayette and a goal scored by Holy Cross. 10-6. And that goal scored by Riley Bergholtz who came off after the two minute penalty or came on after the two minute penalty and she scores. One opera from distance. I don't know what caused that to be an eight meter, by the way. The, the, the pass was about 12, 15 yards away, passed away from it. So it's not shooting space, but it had to be something inside that scoring arc that led to the free position shot. Either way, Holy Cross now with a game high four goal lead. It's 10 to 6. We'll have more right after this break on the Lafayette Sports Network presented by the Patriot League Network on Stadium. future is strong, safe, healthy, inquisitive. Our future is now. When you give to United Way, you build a brighter future for all. Join us as we tackle our community's greatest challenges. Give today for a brighter tomorrow. Learn more at unitedwayglv.org. Our future is united. Well, we're going to look at what might have possibly, I, mean, I guess they're going to call that shooting space on what caused the 8 meter before the peel back for the pass. That's my best guess. Either way, for the Leopards, they had two two-minute penalties killed when it was a 9-6 game. And then right after the penalty, they can see the goal, and they got to figure it out with 13, 16 left to go. Or they're going to lose their Patriot League opener. And here they give the draw control. Holy Cross wins it.
Still a chance here, though, for the Leopard, as mentioned. In these last two games, the Leopard's 1-1 one and one in games that saw late comebacks. They're going to need it here. Shot is saved by Quinn Lacey. I was waiting to see if they were going to call a whistle as Connors was slow to get up. But nothing called there. Davey nearly lost the ball, but picks it back up. Holy Cross almost had the pickpocket. Just six goals for this Leopards attack today. Rowan got fouled. And that is a third player sent off in the second half. The Leopards didn't score the first two times. They need to do it here. There's no option. Got to get it here. Got to get the ball rolling with 12 left to go. Emma Novick leads the way for the Leopards with a hat trick. But the seven on six just hasn't worked for Lafayette. This time... The dangerous play committed by Haley Walker, who's really been helping to lead this Crusader defense today. It's great defense in total by the Crusaders. They have double team with Kirby. Now on a free run by Jen Roan. Shooting space called against the Crusaders. So big spot here for this Lafayette side as Jen Roan has the eight meter coming up. Waits to shoot. Foul called against Holy Cross. I'll try again. And this time it's through. So maybe that's what the doctor ordered. It was certainly needed for the Leopards. 10-7 to 7 the score with 11.33 left to go as Jen Roan on the board trying to provide a spark for this Lafayette attack. Look at the replay here. And able to finish high. Roan her second tally of the season. Product of Rose Valley, Pennsylvania. And so we'll see. This is not by any means out of reach for Lafayette, but they've had some missed opportunities in that scoreless stretch they just were able to put away and end. Jen, a second sibling to play for this program, Laura, her older sister, recent player on this Lafayette Women's Lacrosse program. Laura played defense for Lafayette and was a key player for that unit. Big draw control coming up here. Who will get it? And it's the Leopards. They have not had consecutive goals at any point in this game. Colonel trying to do it. And it'll pass away. Just didn't have enough space to free the hands. Feed gets denied at the post. And Holy Cross answers the call again. 
What a job by this defense. Every time they've needed to make a stop, they've done it. And it looked like pretty good ball movement for the Leopards, too. A little extra help. Could have had a slip to the post open. And an active stick to defend it. Yeah, the aggressiveness of Holy Cross have led to three man-up opportunities for Leopards, but they only converted on one. So in the end, the aggression works out in your favor. And it was Sydney Brandt who caused the turnover. Got the clear herself, too. Approaching the final 10 minutes of action. Final half minute of the shot clock. And it may end up being how Holy Cross can slow down the clock here and finish their possessions. That's not a good one. Pass taken away by the Leopards and Amelia Heisler has a bunch of room to clear. So under 10 to go. Lafayette down by three. Stein. Gives it away to Kirby. This was a game that was a lot about offensive pace on paper in the first half and Credit to Holy Cross. They've really clamped up defensively and have handled the Leopards well. Kirby, one hopper shot is saved. Got the free hands. But the working cage by Holy Cross has been good. Kubler, 10 first half saves. I believe Sophie Oaks is in now, but either way, the keeping's been good. Leopards calls a turnover on the ride. And they'll go back in attack. They need this next goal. And maybe that first consecutive goal streak might be enough. However, Roanne's shot is saved. And again, every time. Give credit to Holy Cross. Pretty good blow by. Shot at the doorstep. But the angle cut off by the keeper, Oaks. Oaks. From Lawrence, New Jersey. Former high school teammate of Jane Kirby, the Lawrenceville School. Or as people in Mercer County call it, Lawrence Prep. It's not the right way to call it, but we do it anyway. Good work by Oaks. Good work by Kluber. Good work by the entire Holy Cross defense today. Under eight to go. Offense trying to extend the lead back to four. An aggressive feed off the mark. Heisler to midfield. Stops. Throws across the field. Not caught cleanly by Davey. Someone's got to track it down. And it'll be a foul caught against Holy Cross. Takes away the entire advantage of creating a foul if the Leopards can't get a quick restart there. The officials care more about the spot. Well then why not foul if you're Holy Cross? And now the official uh, maybe try to reorganize. Well if you weren't worried about the spot so much maybe you'd worry about where the defenders are at. I don't know. Just thinking. Bedell splits two defenders, gets the clear. Roanne to goal line extended, tosses it up to the far wing. Under seven minutes to go here. Every possession becomes critical. Because obviously with the 90 second shot clock, Holy Cross may be able to take a minute, minute and a half off the clock each time they have it. So if you're the Leopards, you need to score.
Baltimore traffic organization here. Maybe they're working on the clock here. And they are. They're giving five extra seconds back here to go up to 616. They might boost that shot clock back up to 43. Shot clock is off, though, right now. They got to get that fixed before they can restart play. Finally, we get back going again. Kirby. Throws it far side. Just look at how these slippers have been marked man on man throughout the half. And the ball on the ground taken away again. Boy, what a job well done. Izzy Grant that time with the takeaway. And a timeout called by Holy Cross. 5.47 left to go in this one. It's been really in the second half a defensive masterpiece by the Crusaders. We'll head off to a break. More after this as you're watching the Lafayette Sports Network presented by the Patriot League Network on Stadium. When they told me I would be facing a total hysterectomy, I had some pretty major concerns. My doctor suspected adenomyosis, and we decided that a hysterectomy was my best option. Easton Hospital isn't the place people think it is. I got the best care I've ever had there. I can't say enough about Easton Hospital. The whole staff, they were caring and kind, and I needed that to help me start my recovery. Learn more about Judy's surgery experience at MyEastonStory.com. It's been a great game defensively for Holy Cross, and it's helped that there's been some stellar play in goal. Juliana Kugler, double-digit saves in that first half of action. She's really been a force to be reckoned with throughout this game. Sophie Oaks coming in in the second half and providing much of the same. 14 saves between the two keepers. In this game, and the Leopards down 10 to 7 with 5:47 left to go. This is one of three teams the Leopards lost to by two goals or fewer in a two and seven Patriot League campaign. And well, the hope was for this senior-laden squad to get wins against those three teams. They're running low on the chance here. It might be Holy Cross winning for the second consecutive season. The previous game here at Fisher Stadium saw a whole bunch of offense. Lafayette winning 21-15. This one, especially in the second half, much different. Great defensive play, especially by Holy Cross. And they're going to have an 8-meter coming up here. Quinn Lacey right around her season total and save percentage 56.6 coming in 56.5 at this point but on the board it's Keely Connors for Holy Cross and they're up by four with 510 left to go not much Lacey could do about that just a step ahead of the eight meter defense of the Leopards maybe a step and a half Connors with her first goal of the game, 17th of the season. She had nine in her first two games alone. 
So not quite the same pace over the last six, but effective nonetheless. Seven draw controls. It's really been the biggest asset to this Holy Cross side today. By the way, Hannah Davey, who's not seen on the draw control unit right now, has not had one. And the Leopards have been outdrawed 12 to 6 in this game. Foul called against Holy Cross, so the Leopards get that bit of good news, but they need a late run and stat. And again, they've yet to have consecutive goals in this game at any point. Emma Novik. Attracts the slide, peels back. We'll try again. Well, it's been only her speed that has been able to riddle this Holy Cross defense today. Nice roll dodge by Jane Kirby to the doorstep and the finish. And that gets it within three, 11 to eight. Second of the game for Jane Kirby. Who has been only 0 of 1. Free position shooting coming into the game number one in the nation in free position goals per game, but gets her second there. And pretty heavy on the roll dodge to get by Sydney Brandt, who's had a really good game for the Crusaders. Three ground balls to cause turnovers. Jolie Creo, Bryn Carroll. Sydney Brandt, all players who have had multiple ground balls and multiple calls turnovers for the Crusaders today. Draw control would be huge here for Holy Cross. They can cut down about a third of the time left on the clock. And up by three, you can maybe get it within three minutes. Every possession adds your win probability that much stronger now down, down the stretch for the visitors. By the way, that goal by Jane Kirby, career goal 137. Connors trying to get an eighth draw control. Someone's got to get there. Eventually it's Holy Cross, but the ball quickly swatted away and picked up by the Leopards. Bella Alampi with the crucial ground ball. Del Priori under pressure, passed well behind Alampi. And given back to Holy Cross. Ball back on the ground again, late foul. Probably the right call there. The pressure of Holy Cross has been too much for the Leopards. And credit to Holy Cross while the Leopards have been able to have their fair share of success with the pressure. Holy Cross has been able to stabilize themselves better. And now they have it in attack. And the Leopards had their chances there. Couldn't win the draw and then turned it over after creating the turnover. And 15 Lafayette turnovers compared to 11 by Holy Cross. And a 35 to 24 shot advantage for Holy Cross. Although 24-22 shots on goal, that's a lot closer. Emma Novik now will try to race ahead. Clear is good. Twenty left to go here. Absolutely necessary for the Leopards to score here. 
They're still in it if they can score in this possession. Stein trying to dodge with a little swim. Nothing there even on a pass inside the scoring fan. Here's one, though, and Caroline Colonel makes it 11-9 for the first time the Leopards have consecutive goals, but is it too little too late with under two left? Just a strong drive by the freshman from Ridgefield, Connecticut. That's her fifth of the season. Timeout called here on the field, 11 to nine the score. Again, 155 left to go. So we're, we're going to do a little bit of the uh, speculative manner here of what happens if, based on who wins the draw control. If Holy Cross wins the draw control, well, they're not going to win it right on the first second, most likely. It might take anywhere from two to five seconds, maybe longer. Conceivably speaking, you can get the clock down to 20 seconds if you maintain possession and get a shot clock violation. Or you can score and go up by three with less than two minutes to go, and by all means, you pretty much have the game won. If the Leopards get the draw control and they score on the next possession, depending on what time they score with, they may have almost a full possession to try to get the equalizer. But really what this game comes down to is I think two even teams where Holy Cross has played the cleaner game. They've been stronger defensively. They've turned the ball over less. And in terms of just dictating the flow of play, Holy Cross has done a better job of that despite these two sides being of similar play, usually is still one team that tends to dictate the flow of action. And that's a violation against the Leopards. That's a rough one for the Leopards to take. Now they need to go full out ride here. The clock is not their friend. Pass on the ground. Holy Cross ended up getting that ground ball. Continues to help their cause. This pass a little bit high. Maybe a chance now. And it's over the back against Jane Kirby. Kirby doesn't agree with the call. We'll look at the replay here. And the official got it right. That foot is on the 30. Twice, actually. The official right there to see it, too. So under a minute left to go. Shot clock off here after an offside by the Leopards. Again, it's the little things. Wait, no, they're going to actually say it's the other way. So maybe here's a chance. Clutch time here for the Leopards. they got to get it done. Final minute. They'll see Del Prior. Gets it away. Bella Alampi, free hands coming here. The shot, though, high. Under 40 seconds now. Kirby attracts extra. Alampi, free hands here, and the goal. It's 11 10 with 23 seconds left. And hope yet alive if they can control the draw. Bella Alampi, the junior from Oakland Catholic, on the board. And that's her sixth goal of the season. On the top scorers off the bench for the Leopards. Well, 
Holy Cross draw control pretty much makes it a game. Lafayette draw control leaves the door open. One goal game, would you want it any other way? I mean, it is unfortunate for the Leopards. They didn't have consecutive goals until this current three game string in the final few minutes. But there is still a chance. Violation again called against the Leopards. That's two down the stretch for Katie DiMarino and the Leopards. And now the, the clock's not moving. Oy. Those last two draw controls, I think Di Marino moved a bit early. A whole lot of traffic directing here. Leopards need a quick turnover and a quick shot. A swipe no good. Connors, 10 seconds left to go. Holy Cross doing just enough defensively. Foul called here at five seconds left to go. Last few ticks will come off, but just enough defensively by Holy Cross. And they didn't allow the Leopards to get a run until the final few minutes. They got the job done with 14 saves between Juliana Kubler, who had 10, and Sophie Oaks, who had 4. And they were able to control the draws 14 to 8, and the Crusaders come away with the road victory 11 to 10 in their Patriot League opener for Lafayette, although the first Patriot League game of the season, a brutal one to take because it's at home and by a one-goal variety by a team that you may very well See a tiebreaker against down the stretch. We'll head off to a quick break. When we come back, we'll wrap this one up, and we'll also look ahead what's to come for the Leopards in their upcoming Patriot League games. Stay tuned. More right after this as you're watching the Lafayette Sports Network presented by the Patriot League Network on Stadium. When you want to be noticed, a good presentation can mean everything. Let the friendly, experienced staff at Nacy Printing help you make that all-important impression with sharp, colorful offset or digital printing. Serving the Lehigh Valley and beyond for over 35 years, we offer a one-stop shop for a wide variety of print services, including complete design, full color offset, and digital printing, with complete bindery and mailing services. Some of our most popular items are newsletters, brochures, sell sheets, booklets, pocket folders, labels, and much, much